American Death Camp, hosted by Stone Fox Detroit, is made possible by the Kill Podcasters Network, this station and other public television stations, and Sam Bakeman Free. Funding for this special presentation and the humanities was provided by Nexia and the Ted Kaczynski Memorial Trust. Hey dreamers, believers, and other internet schemers out there. Welcome back to another edition of American Death Camp. I, I'm your host, I am Stone Fox Detroit, and as always with me, the Oliver Stone of podcasting, the Jack Death of media, King Tanner. So happy to be here. <laughs> killing I'm, squids. Yes, killing squids. We're, we're about to go li- down the line, audience. <laughs> okay, you you ready for this? King Tanner, how are you doing? I'm doing well as always, man. How about yourself? I'm doing wonderful. As you know, it is uh, Turkey Week. Oh turkey Day is coming up. Are you excited for that? Oh yeah, dude! I got some travel plans. Gonna see some family. It's gonna yes, be a great time. Yes, you're you're abandoning me here. <laughs> <laughs> you're leaving. You're running away. That's okay. I, I I bet that'll be fun. Flying on the airplane and everything. Doing the the TSA pre check. Everyone has oh, a good time with that. I don't have pre check. I I oh. do on the way back though. I'm doing the thing where they scan your eyeball. Yes. And you can just like walk through with your shoes on and yeah, whatever in your luggage. It's nice. Yeah, good. They're like, you got a laptop? Cool, keep it in there, dude. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Does <laughs> does, does the X ray affect electronics and stuff like that? Um, it, it affects I don't know like about film. Like okay. If, if you have like a film yes. camera, that's like the one thing they tell you to take out of your bag. Yes. And also like, there's something called like radio pharmaceuticals that I I was reading about mm. yesterday on like the TSA website. It was like. Yeah, don't bring any radio pharmaceuticals unless they're approved. And I'm yeah. like, what radioactive medicine are people taking? I've yes. never heard of such no, a thing. No radioactive medicine or 35 millimeter film on the plane. <laughs> none, none of that stuff when you travel. Okay, so I hope everyone's excited for their holiday. I love the holiday because I get, Daddy gets his juice. Okay, I get my, my spice, spiced cranberry Sprite. Okay? I didn't realize that your Sprite is transparent until right now. Is it? Oh, yeah, it's little, green. We got some effects here. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. One thing I probably shouldn't have brought on the set, but Daddy yeah. needs his juice. Okay, I know, I know you guys probably have your, your favorite juices out there. <laughs> all right. Before we get into the show, I got to say go to killpodcasters.com. Okay, check out all the shows. There's a lot going on there. Duh Heads. Duh Heads was really good this week. I love Duh Heads. Um, I think uh, there's some Paul Wincock content on there. Yeah, the, uh, the teaser for his uh, sketch show that uh, I'm producing, uh, so Izzy's producing it as well, called yes. CCP Mind Control. That's that's awesome. Um, yeah, it's I'm be... looking. Yes, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we got some. We got a new addition on the network too. The Occult Technician. Before yeah. I forget, yes, Mr. Mr. Victor, Occult Technician, has joined us. Go check him out, okay? And we also have um, uh, IDK. I discussed oh, Kino. Yes, that's uh, right. This James is a new development. from IDK just joined a couple days ago. He's got an interview with Billy Hellfire, wow. director of Duck, the Carbine High School Massacre. Interesting. So he's, he's pulling in some really cool interviews. He's uh, yes. He told me he's got um, Uwe in the emails, so mm. uh, there might be an Uwe Bowl interview in the network, which would wow. be really cool. Look at all these shows that we have. We've got some stuff going on, everybody, so you've got to go to the website. Okay, and I know we've got some uh, people watching here on YouTube, but we are also on Spotify. We're on Spotify, we're on Google Podcasts, Amazon Music for Podcasts, and uh, we're going to try to get on the Apple, right? Oh, I believe yeah. uh, KPN has a channel, right? Uh, yeah, we do. Awesome. Yeah. So we're on we're on all the streaming yeah, sites. Kill Podcasters. If you type that in on Apple, you'll get Piss Magazine, you'll get Big and Bald. You should get Duh Heads soon. Yes. Nice. Duh Heads will be up there. That's amazing. And then another show that's not on the network that I've got to I've got to give a plug to because they're friends of the show. I'm an extremely big fan. Lifting in the Ruins. Lifting in the Ruins. Go check them out. Okay, everybody. They uh, they cover a little little bit of video games, but then they cover my favorite thing: internet personalities, internet media. They're great guys. They I believe they have a Patreon as well too to go check out. Okay. So now we can get we can get to the show to to another internet personality who I'm a, I'm a huge fan of. Okay, we started the show with him last week. Mr. Alex Jones. All right. Big, big fan. Yes, big what, fan. What's what's Alex getting up to? I don't know what he's getting up to right now. He's still doing his show. That no, nothing has stopped him. <laughs> nothing has stopped him from doing his show. This is crazy. We had a guest appearance by um, <laughs> Mr. Forty Five. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love seeing him pop up randomly in the show. A little propaganda <laughs> when we get the episode started. Um, so this video is gonna it's gonna showcase how uh, caring and sweet and uh, lovable Mr. Jones is. Okay, contrary to what uh, everybody else thinks about him. Okay, he's got a little surprise guest here in the field. I'm out here. I'm out here. We out here. 
and some cat just came over for a rub up here. out here like in a park. Anyways, brought it up against me. Everybody knows I'm sweet and good. <laughs> yes, he's crazy. sweet and good. <laughs> he's such a sweet and good guy. He is, he is. He loves it. He loves the cats. You know, that's definitely not a CIA cat at all. Definitely. Uh, one of those uh, ones that's got a microphone built into it that uh, they spent, what, $20 million on the... Oh the yeah, acoustic kitty project. Yeah, pro- project <laughs> acoustic kitty. Yeah, yes, yeah, so we got the page, we, the, uh, we got the wiki pulled up here. They tried to install a microphone in the spine of a cat. Yes, and then it wandered into traffic. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> they spent they spent more on that than they did uh, the space program, which is how much did they spent on the space. Program? I mean, no, it's probably more, but you know, oh my god, we couldn't get back to the moon, but it's because they uh, spent all the money on this. Seriously, yeah, no, we, the 60s were just like Hail Mary passes for the yeah. CIA. They were like, what if we brainwash people with trip out drugs? What yeah. if we. Instead of having a, buying a safe for the telemetry data, they kept it in the janitor's closet, <laughs> which was very smart. Shout out to Werner von Braun for that and all the, the mishaps at the NASA program that's been going on. They have a lot of explosions, <laughs> a lot yeah. of combustions. Uh, what was the other thing that catches on fire? And they're horribly, they they're yeah. horribly mismanaged. <laughs> on all on all the biggest projects, they have explosions and fire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot the Columbia shuttle disaster happened oh, yeah. Yeah, until yeah. recently. Like, um, I was watching Penn and Teller bullshit. Great, great old show. Showtime show, and uh, they were like, they have one episode where they're totally filleting NASA and being like, NASA's fucking awesome. They're like a great you know thing and then they do a follow-up where they're like hey despite being a bastion of science and reason these guys fuck up constantly and the government should not handle your money they're like they're hardcore libertarians yes um there needs to be more checks and balances with nasa i feel oh yeah you know and how come we can't get any unphotoshopped photos (laughs) they're all photoshopped yeah we need some uh, non-cgi photos of the earth please What would that even? It would probably look like fucking crap. Yeah, I'm okay. It with would probably that. look like un, like undiscernible crap. It would. It would shut up Eddie Bravo though. Yeah, but we have okay. satellite photos. <laughs> like yes, satellite yeah, photos exist. Like yeah. how far out do you need? Very true. Like, well, they're, they're putting you know they're putting cameras on comets, you know. So it's like why are we questioning any of this stuff? Oh yeah, that if if, it's, if space is real or not. Yeah. Yeah, we've got is, that. If you didn't know that, if our Indonesian audience didn't know, there, there's a school of thought in America right now that space might not be real. Yes. And there are people that are, you know, probably for profit and attention, you know, running with this idea mm-hmm. and coming up with really like thin proofs for it, flimsy proofs. I kind of like this idea for our show where we're giving like an introduction to American culture, to Indonesia. It's, it, it is an interesting <laughs> spin. Cause I'm, you know, we do have a global audience, you know. We do, we do. You know, of the 500 people that watch this show, 250 of them are Indonesian, which is I'm okay is with that. Rad. It's a beautiful place. I showed you that video the other day when mm-hmm. there's like horses on the beach, and I was like, oh, maybe we do need to do a tour of Indonesia. So we love you, Indonesia. We're glad that you're tuning in. Yeah, we could convert to Islam yes. and stuff. Like, I mean, we I mean, we got beards going now. Oh, yes. Yes, that's why. That's, the whole reason that's why we're, we're growing them out, yes, so we yes. can visit Indonesia. I feel like I'm, I want to go the whole season. I'm going to go the whole season I've planned. I, I shaved it off right before we started. And I'm just going to grow the beard for the entire season. I think I'm going to do that every season. Yeah. Yeah. Tosh, Tosh has got his uh, shirts and everything. I've got the beard. Okay. <laughs> see how long it gets before we're done with the season. I feel I like think that's that'd pretty be nice. good. Yes. I kind of. I think we should figure out how long we want a season to be. Like how many episodes. Yes. I'm thinking. I, I'm thinking we're going to stick with our original thing. We wanted to do like 15 episodes. I'm thinking about staying there. We we might do. We're probably going to do a special. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. We talked about a that. live episode or two maybe but um f- regular pre-recorded episodes i'm thinking 15 for the first yeah. uh, season so look forward to that okay good. actually streaming in between seasons might not be a bad idea too yeah just get our feet wet a little bit get you some extra money in your pocket yeah so look forward to the the streaming after season one that's going to happen everybody can uh, get in the chats we'll start get the get your hands wet with the the super chats everybody i know people like to do that okay Oh, and also feel free to give to the Bitcoin address we have now. Oh, yes, there's a, there's a Bitcoin, <laughs> all kinds of plugs going on. And uh, oh, yeah, by the way, shout out to uh, Penn and Teller and uh, Operation Paperclip <laughs> <laughs> for the space program stuff. Uh, we we do have one more plug that we should uh, shout out. Yeah, yeah, go, no, go for it. Uh, oh, we, yes, Bohemian oh, Grove. yes. Bohemian Grove, as you can see, I'm wearing uh, one of their clothes right now, okay? It's this uh, war mode shirt. All right, now, this is this is really cool, actually. So they've got a sale going on. You, you buy one item, you get another one for 50% off, okay? And then that's going on to the end of the year. 
but we've got a special code, everybody. So if you want the, you can have the sale, okay? But on top of it, you can get 10% off. You got to use the code Death Camp in the checkout. You can get whatever you want, okay? They've got a, they've got a, a 9/11 shirts. They've got a Adrenochrome shirts. I like the Adrenochrome stuff. You, as you can see, the stickers that you've yeah. seen on here, and you can use that on the stickers. You can get your own stickers as seen on uh, Death Camp, okay? Get it from BohemianGrove.com. Friends of the show. I love them. Hey, you can even get some some of Izzy stuff. He's got a perfect pop shirt on there that I really like. It, <laughs> Bohemian Grove, it's the place to go for your uh, conspiratorial clothing needs and uh, your, your your goy wraps, okay? Your, your goy cloths, all right? <laughs> it's the best place to go. That's that's a good plug. I'm glad uh, I'm glad we're doing a little little bit of networking with them. They're friends they're friends of ours. That's what friends do, everybody. We we help each other, we hype each other up. Yeah, and we're, uh, all, we're all on the come up. And if you buy one of those really cool fucking shirts, we get some money. Yes, we, nice. we might we might get a little Help change. Help pay Emmett because we work him to the bone. Yeah, so Stone Fox needs to get paid eventually, okay? I can't as much as I would like to do this free for the rest of my life. It's not gonna happen. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Or hey, you know, at least we'll spend it the right way, okay? We're not gonna be like NASA. Yeah. Gonna, <laughs> gonna, or the CIA. We're not gonna we're not gonna spend it on an acoustic kitty program. We're gonna spend it on getting you not a sewing desk to do your show at. Yes, we'll get a better desk <laughs> and then maybe I can put a microphone inside my grimace. I can use grimace as the microphone. We could do that. we could do that today, <laughs> dude. Drill a hole in it, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that that would be pretty good. What's, All right. What's I'm up next on the Yes, uh, I'm ready to get docket. to some videos, okay? Let's get let's get to some good stuff here. So we were supposed to have an MMA guy on to do an interview, okay? This is like the second time in a row we were supposed to interview him, right? Mr. Friend of the show, Nate Torres. Friend of the show, Nate Torres of Warlord MMA. Uh, home, hometown is Big Spring, Big Spring, Texas, everybody. So since in light of not having him, okay, he's going to be on soon, okay? We're going to make that happen. But I wanted to showcase some MMA guys. Okay, there's okay. been some some MMA and media that some some funny videos, uh, some intense stuff. I wanted to to showcase. We're gonna show some Brandon Buckingham fights. Oh yes, you know maybe maybe I'll have to have to look some uh, some stuff up for him. I like him. I, yeah, he's, I like he's his good. show. He's good stuff. Yes, he's really good. But there's a, there's another <laughs> controversial character that I'd like to showcase here. His name is uh, Sean Strickland. Okay. Sean Strickland. Yes. Is that Sean with an H or S E A N? Yes. Unlike uh, the our other favorite guy, Sean Ryan. Who's S H? This is S E A N. Sean Strickland. That's just a, that's a strong name. That's a name with character. Yes. When I look at you guys, man, you guys are just like soft motherfuckers, dude. What's He's like with uh, the Nelk Boys here. I'm like like harder. But just like, carry yourself. For instance, like, but the way you dress. Some advice. You dress like a 12 year old. Skinny Whoa. jeans, like you know, it's like you don't like you just you dress like a little kid. <laughs> Yeah, you dress like a little kid. You guys have the greatest gig. You make a lot of money. You go to all the pool parties. Like you guys have a great gig. You need to but dress like you're doing drywall son, every day. Yeah, that's, that's what you need to do. I raised a couple of Sean John uh, white t-shirt. You wear Nike socks, basketball shorts, and a forty thousand dollar watch. Like what's wrong you know with the saying? Nike socks? Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Athletics. But if you guys are a little bit more, just a little bit more masculine. You know, it'd be nice. When I look at you guys, an athlete you telling you not to wear Nike stuff. Yeah, very interesting. So he's got his own line. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yes. Yes. He, well, he's the kind of guy too, blue collar kind of headed guy who uh, he was he was being gifted like a uh, really expensive new truck, and he was like, "No, I'd rather drive the the shithole that I've got. I don't want to encourage other people that they can uh, to buy things they can't afford." He's an interesting guy. He's uh, comes from a rough background, but I like that he's uh, challenging the Nelk Boys. Nobody challenges them. Yeah. No, really? You know? well, not, they not, seem very. Not they not seem like challenged this. in not a like lot this. of ways. Oh, well, they're challenged. Okay. Um, honest. I mean, I, I I get the whole the whole thing, but like it's yeah. just such a fucking tired thing. It's like, yeah, dude, you got you know you guys could be a little tougher. It's like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, dude. Okay, and what's what's your other fucking yeah? They're, idea? they're not they're not beating men for a living. Like, uh, <laughs> yes, they're not. We're all not as masculine as you, Sean. Okay, we understand. That, it's just okay? it's like cool, dude. I'm happy you can come on my show to reaffirm your identity. <laughs> It's yeah. like it's like that's the thing. Here's here's the other thing. Yes. If if they were more masculine than him, he would also be upset and weird about that shit. Because mm -hmm. that's just the psychology of someone who gives a fuck about other people. I yes. think it's he, like he actually really does care. Probably what other people think. Hundred percent. This is just all defense mechanism shit. Yes. Right. Because this is a giant platform. He. I mean, he's done Joe Rogan before, mm -hmm. and even on that, he that he was butting heads with him a little bit and like trying to shut down some of the messages Joe was trying to get across. So even even Joe Rogan, like one of the calmest guys in the world, he's uh, butting heads with. It's, which just means like you just like starting conflict for no reason. Oh yes. It's yes, like he, if I can't make everyone feel a little uncomfortable, then I'm uncomfortable. Yes. Which yes. is like. What twelve-year-old boys do? No offense. That being said, I do think people that wear shorts look like little boys. Yeah, I fucking I that's I don't really wear 
fucking shorts. You know, a lot of little boys wearing forty thousand dollar watches, <laughs> which is so, <laughs> which is you know kind of true. I yeah, very true, very true. Um, so this actually leads this leads into uh, the next video that we've got. Okay, he's he's going after another proponent of the Nelk Boys. Okay, Brad, Mr. Bradley Martin, who we've covered on the show before. I don't know if you remember this, but uh, him and uh, him and Steiny were messing w- with the the shorter influencer woman in the gym. Oh yeah. Oh, yes. Fight. Somebody asked him about him. About him. Who's Bradley Martin? He's two sixty. I don't give a fuck. Who's Bradley Martin? He's this a, is what Tanner said about Sean when I first brought him up. He's a really fit dude. Is he an MMA fighter? No, no. <laughs> I don't know this Bradley Martin. Yeah. But he's, he's two sixty. Bradley Martin, if you're here right now and I could get away with it, I would take your fucking life. Whoa. I would. I would put. I would. It's a little bit stronger than Sam Hyde and, and Hassan. So take <laughs> your fucking life. And Bradley Jesus Martin, Christ, know, dude. But Nina gave me a little backstory on you to challenge people. Motherfucker, I'm in Vegas. You show the fuck up, you little bitch. Talk about challenging people, waiver, dude. And we'll see how many bones we can break in your fucking face. Dear You're Lord. You're so intense. Like, like if, he was, if he was right here, yeah. and he was like, hey, Sean, I think I can beat you in a street fight. I would get up, and I'd fucking backhand him like the little Yes, bitch. everybody, the Paul Wincock of MMA. Yeah. Sean Strickland. Very intense, dude. Oh my god, dude! I dude, I would wear Sean Strickland like a fucking nitrile glove. You heard it here first. I would everybody. open my hand inside of him like a fucking umbrella in a rainstorm, and I would leave his asshole winking like a cyclops in a heavier fucking monsoon. This is why you don't fuck with I would, King Tanner. No, dude, I will. I, dude, I will dilate Sean Strickland's asshole with my <laughs> wide beam, and I will make I will make him yes. cry. I, dude, I will I will fuck him till he loves me. Somebody please clip this and give this to Sean Strickland. I'd love uh, Tanner's first prize fight to be against Sean Strickland. Sean Strickland, if I was put in a self-defense situation and I wouldn't be prosecuted and you were attacking me, if you were one here, on if you one, were here right now, self-defense in, like, in my domicile, Castle Doctrine, and you wanted to hurt me, I would dust your knees. I would turn your knees to dust and your, the rest of your career would be pissing in a bag and walking around <laughs> on different shows being like, I used to talk shit on the internet, yes. and then I learned my lesson. That would be your job, Sean Strickland, because the only thing you'd be good for is pissing in a fucking bag yeah. and talking about how cool your new fucking 9 millimeter with a fucking stock, with a fucking pistol body on it is. Sorry, a rifle body on it is. Like, oh. Damn, we got you fired up today. Yeah, dude. Yeah, so be careful, Sean, or you'll be drinking all your meals through a straw. Yeah. Dude, you look, you look Holy cute. Shit. You look cute with your jaw wired shut while I'm fucking you in your ass. Yeah, I'm sorry. You know, fucking you gotta, so step a line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I, you know, he, he does the same thing basically. So, yeah, I thought that I was. Think it's a little warranted. You know, you were like, I don't know who Sean is, but I'll be sticking my beam in him. <laughs> I've never heard of this guy. I literally haven't. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. What a great introduction to that, everybody. And uh, I'm going to have to referee this fight between King Tanner and Sean Strickland. <laughs> I think Izzy can help set that up a little bit. He's an MMA guy. Yeah, Izzy can uh, hold, train down, you. hold down his shoulders while I, <laughs> while I <laughs> make him feel like a woman. <laughs> That's hilarious, dude. You know, <laughs> moving moving from uh, the tumultuous uh, relationship between King Tanner and Sean Strickland, another proponent of uh, the Nelk Boys, one of the original guys, uh, Steve will do it. Oh Did yeah! Did you hear about Steve? Will do it this week. This uh, is a little bit of news for everybody. No, he's uh, yes, he was in South America and he got arrested doing a viral video. Oh my yes, god! Everybody. This is everybody's really got to be control, careful when you're in another country abroad. Okay, uh, one of those locked up abroad situations. Yes, with an assault rifle. Wow! I believe we've got a we've got a little video on the next thing here. Yes, 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 yes. If you want to play the audio, there we go. They take it very seriously in South America. The driver's pissed. <laughs> they arrested the driver too. His heart shorts. That's what you want to go to uh, Brazilian jail and heart shorts. Go to. He's like resisting arrest in a foreign country. Yes, this guy's slow. <laughs> yes, I guess he's got the money to do it. You know, that's when you need Sean Strickland to come in. Yeah. I bet Sean, Sean Strickland would help. He, I mean, if he had me as backup, we'd have that situation <laughs> under control. <laughs> yes, yes. If we had King Tanner in there. King, people don't know this. He's, he's a really tough guy, okay? That's why I have him on the show. You don't fuck with him, okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm basically security. Yes, he's security, producer, your CEO, CFO. You do a lot. Yeah, but you I'm going to leave my stuff. door unlocked in case Sean Strickland comes and he wants to fucking tango. Yes, you're kind of like the Mr. Beast of MMA. Oh, yeah. You Thank know? you. Oh, yeah. No, I, <laughs> you know, I help people out. 
Yes. I get them. I, I send them money so they can get to the fights yes. that that matter. So they can get so they can get their CTE. Yes, and you're on YouTube at the same time. I run a giant business. Hey guys, what's going on? <laughs> In this video, I'm gonna kick Sean Strickland's ass. Yeah, and then <laughs> I'm gonna make him eat his feet <laughs> <laughs> for 24 hours. <laughs> Hey, what's up, everybody? Yes. Um. Yeah. Punchables. That's gonna be the name of my uh, fucking... Punchables. Yes. Yeah. King Tanner's Punchables. Ava- available soon. You know, you go to the website and you can uh, you can win prizes with the rappers. Yeah. I. You know what? I think that's all I have to do to get Sean Strickland's attention is to shit talk him. Yeah. Oh. Well. You know, I'm gonna make a short out of that. Yeah. Absolutely. And he'll definitely say, "Oh, people, you think people were upset about the tipping last week? Oh my God. We just seem to keep amp- scaling up." Uh, <laughs> the the YouTube Shorts audience and how pissed you, they get. Did you see a Louis J Gomez and Opie Hughes from oh Opie and Anthony God, going at yes. it? Yes, I wasn't sure if I wanted to cover that, but dude, yeah, that was insane. That was really. That he, was really. Opie funny. totally just like uh, mistook everything. Yes. You know, and then just lost it, and then uh, Lewis was just like, "You're a fucking idiot." Yeah, you know what I mean, like, tripled down because it was getting so much attention. So why wouldn't he go harder mm. on it? Oh my god, dude! No, someone was literally like, like just a a relatively relevant comedian used Opie Hughes as a punchline and Opie was like I thought we were friends bro and it's like dude I fucking tease I tease people I like all the fucking time dude yeah and like I love Sean Strickland in a romantic <laughs> sexual way yes I've talked about this before <laughs> we've uh, everybody we cover we love on the show okay they're friends they're lovers they're business associates sometimes <laughs> Sean Strickland or someone who I want to <laughs> I want to turn their brains into quick creep yes <laughs> when you love someone that's that's what you do <laughs> <laughs> all right everybody uh we're gonna we're gonna move we're gonna, you just got me worked up with all the. i'm sorry i derailed your show Oof, so much just dude. a little bit it's okay it'll be good for just that a little, I'm so it'll sorry, be it'll be good for the algorithm and the shorts <laughs> all right so what's next bro we had to take a breather there i had to go vomit in the corner for a second i was hyperventilating over the show <laughs> <laughs> um so you know they're speaking of uh the matt walsh stuff with the youtube shorts audience you know i mentioned uh, america first turning point uh, they've been doing their own like Chris Hansen stuff. Really? Yes, like catching uh, child predators and uh, CP. Wait, wait, stuff. which which uh, channel is this? Uh, Turning Point. Turning on Point YouTube. USA. Yes, on. Uh, yes, that's a very on YouTube. That what? That's kind of desperate. But yes, like, I, I mean, obviously I, I appreciate you know, the work. Yes, obviously this is a reels and shorts show, so I, I found it in the shorts. So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna watch. Uh, yes, type in uh, Turning Point for me, and they're at Walmart. This is not how I thought we'd be. Uh, Transitioning from a uh, well, no, I figured, no, just you know, like talking about turning point. Steve, like I'm, Steve I'm, will do it. Got arrested, and I feel like they're <laughs> they're start they're starting their pre-election stuff a little uh, early. Because yeah, I, even I saw this actually. Yes. Um, Why are you guys looking at me? Hmm. We got all the audio. We got all the chat logs. Talking to Ali. We're gonna talk about it. All right. Oh my god. I mean, I wonder why they're looking. Twenty-three <laughs> year old. Look at what you're wearing. Harry. A you're, you're looking at Andy Milanaka's haircut from, Hastings, from Italy. Nebraska. Believed he was communicating with a 12-year-old girl from Lincoln, Nebraska. Awful. You were talking to her last night about, you know, sex. Come on, you stick out like a sore thumb, man. Got to know the pull out game. Oh my Take god. Go into a dark place and make out. We we'll drive around, go somewhere and we hear go somewhere in the dark or something to make out stuff. Make a run for it. Oh, of course. <laughs> Whenever they're in a hurry, tons of they get into the car HHP, accidents. The detectives oh, and everyone involved are. to make sure Chris is prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. He won't be. And justice no. is served. There won't be any justice served. These videos they leave off there at the end, like they've done they've done something for the greater good, and that he's gonna you know go away for a long time. It's not usually how that goes. We've mentioned this before in the show. Yeah, the incredibly low conviction rate. I believe yes. someone reached out last time and told us that they had made some changes in some states, and they do have convictions under their belt now. Oh, but it's like really this is not the best way to deal with sexual predators. I mean, one, it's yeah. taking on an inordinate amount of risk. I know we have a lot of people that are like media savvy yes. and probably want to do what we do or something similar that watch. Don't do this one. This is a bad line of business. Yes. Um, like let the people who already did it, do it and run its course. Yeah. Because I don't, we have a, we have a, a saying where it's like, yeah, do you want, do you want that free million views? Do you want to get your free million views? Yeah. And, 
content like that, it'll get looked at a million times, but it's not going to translate into anything. You might even do more harm than good in, yeah. the, in the long run, to yeah, be honest with you. You've created a violent uh, new, you've created a person who's crazy yes. and now knows your face and your yes, name. Yes, you've made an enemy. Yep. <laughs> you've made an enemy for fucking life. I don't know. A lot of people probably aren't considering that. Yes. Just like, you know, Tanner, Tanner made an enemy out of uh, Sean Strickland. I think that's going to be funny. Make an enemy out of that. Oh, I think I think he'll respect gonna, me for it. He's going to see it. You know, he's kind of like uh, the other Sean. He likes to know what people are saying about him, yeah. as as much as he comes off that he doesn't care. Oh, you know dude. that he cares, and when that short blows up, everyone's going to be in the comments talking shit. Oh, that's going to be good. I, I hope mean, they tag him. Yes, you know the thing about that. I'm not. I'm not. I don't get upset about the comments. I I feed into it. I like that. I like that people get the context wrong and they don't understand and they won't look into the show or see that it's comedy. <laughs> And it, I just kind of get off on it a little bit because it's too funny. It's too funny, you guys. And I hope Sean Strickland gets all worked up about it. Maybe he'll make a video. That would be so, so happy. Some people like, did. you see what they said to you about you on Death Camp? It's good. This is going to get to that point, everybody. At some point, <laughs> the things we say are going to get out and people are going to be asking other people about what, what, what we said on Death Camp about them. Yeah. Oh, my. No, this that is what I'm building. I'm trying to build world build and character build here so we can get to that point because then everybody's going to get involved and it's going to be funny. And we'll be laughing. I know. Uh, we're reaching out for uh, comments about Paul Wincock. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some some news. Some news yeah. channels reaching out. Yeah. That when Turning Point is uh, contacting us about yeah. Paul Paul Wincock. <laughs> hey, do you think if he would tone it down and do an event? <laughs> speaking event. <of> yeah. <laughs> he could be like Matt Walsh and do a speaking event. He'll be like Michael Knowles. Paul Wincock is uh, the Michael Knowles of Kill Podcaster Network. <laughs> He's I I God I. I say shit like he's the RGG Allen. Yeah. But like, I really hope he's not. But like, there's mm-hmm. a video where he would, you know, his buddy was driving. I mean, I should probably pull this up. And he's just, he just takes the keys out of the fucking car. Let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah. We're going to pull this up, everybody. <laughs> it's fucking crazy, dude. Okay. So we have the video. Hey, yo, we're here in the car, nigga. Hey, yo. <laughs> can you drive with no keys? No. <laughs> <laughs> See, he's just like turning point. He leaves off at the end. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I wish the thing would pop as a justice is served. Justice is served. <laughs> yeah. That's what they need to do. Instead of uh, meeting him at Walmart, they need to get in the car with them and have them drive somewhere and just pull out the keys. Do, um, <laughs> do you want to do one more video and then a Mac on the mic? We're, our death oh, clock's yes. at 27 minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to do another Mac on the mic today, you guys. Yeah, so so to finish up, uh, you know, I did the, the turning point where they get the cops. Uh, the cop, we, we do need to let the cops handle this because they've got a lot of time on their hands. Okay. Cause you know what they're, they're doing when these people are doing it, <laughs> What's that? go to type in uh, cops on a uh, cop on playground. Okay. Oh my God. All right, oh, everybody. This is let them do their job. Classic okay? of the fucking internet. Yes. I got to show some classics on here sometimes. Dude, this was some of my favorite ones. This was an instant classic. <laughs> This did is you, what they're did doing. You, did you see all the fucking edits of this? So no. My favorite edit was someone edited like a hundred of these cops coming out of the slide. <laughs> that like, sounds good. Just to go I like that. Blender edit. That was so fucking funny. Dear Lord, man. The God, that's good. Um, so, <laughs> so that's are, what cops are doing. Oh, are yes. Ready for Mac on the mic? Yes, everybody. We've got a new segment on the show, which is uh, aligned with uh, Duh Heads, our sister show. Mac on the mic from Cambodia. Okay, this is where Mac from Cambodia, he sends us uh, messages and we play them for the people. He's got a lot of important messages and uh, some of it is about our own media as well, too. He's reviewed all the shows. He's been reviewing the internet. He's been reviewing culture. He's got a few things to say. So let's just get into, let's get into the first message. China as an English teacher for a year and a half. Little background. I went there and within eight hey. months I was making porn. <laughs> One second, we might need to fix the audio. All right, let's get to that first message from Mac. Ooh, I'm excited. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, lived in China as an English teacher for a year and a half. I went there and within eight months I was making 4000 a month. I was making more than anyone in my company. Wow. And the reason is because I got away from the expat party crowd. Uh-oh. So a lot of people that, you know, you go over there, you know, me and you, you know, a white guy, you know, dating a hot Asian chick, you know, we're thinking we're cute shit. Wait, wait, quick question. There might be some people who don't know who Mac is oh, yes. and why yes, 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 we're yes, talking yes. to and about him. So if you did not see, I forgot, sometimes I got to preface some of this stuff. I'm, I'm already comfortable with some of these bits. So we're talking to Mac, who is Izzy's cousin, and he lives in Cambodia. Okay, he's a, he's a teacher over there. 
And I wanted him to be part of the voicemail, but he's not able to do that. And I found out he's got a lot of things to say, okay? He's got a lot of life experience and life advice, and he wanted to give you a little bit of his background and also some of his messages to take home, okay? So we're going to showcase them here on the show. Hell yeah. So here's the rest of that. Yes. About uh, white guys dating hot Asian ladies in Cambodia yes. or China. A lot of point. people. Uh, it's a lot of guys, right? Oh, yeah. It's a lot of guys. <laughs> Passport bros, right? Passport bros, yes. That, Getting away from the expat um, party. And, you know, yeah, it's easy to get, a, you know, 10 out of 10, especially I like the way they, the women act here. But um, the party and, that and everything else isn't going to like do anything. It's just going to keep you stuck in the same loop. So you have a lot of people that um, come here and they're like, yeah, I don't hang around expats or the traditional party crowd because a lot of people are thinking that like, People are different. I mean, people somewhat are a little different here, but, you know, you still got to keep up your momentum. Okay. So people are different there. I wonder what what the difference is with the women there. Yeah. I mean, I honestly, I kind of wonder in Cambo- what dating Cambodia culture and China. Is, is, is like in these places. Because yes. it's like, it, there's no way it's anything like america i mean there it's probably is in large part but like maybe maybe they're quieter maybe because he speaks english maybe they don't talk much yeah i mean i'm just guessing i'm just taking a shot in the dark there um well that's <laughs> the thing i mean but doesn't the world speaks english at this point i yeah. mean i don't know about cambodia but probably <laughs> well that's why he's over there he's teaching them he's teaching them he's yeah. teaching them the english so they all know yeah, you, so he has more think, people to talk to do you think matt goes after the good english speakers and oh, he goes after that low hanging fruit. Well, he yeah, maybe maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe a little bit of both. Somewhere somewhere in the middle. I'm a somewhere in the middle kind of guy. If you've been following the show, so let's. Uh, is that the end of the first message? Uh, yes. All right, we got another message here. Let's continue on. And then um, also, you know, I was making like I said, four thousand a month. I had my own private TG business. I didn't have oh. the, uh, none of the, my managers. They were never on my back. I was teaching children and someone was like, well, what's your secret? And I said, my secret? Yes, tell I us said, your secret. Well, the kids don't bother me first off. You know, I don't really expect too much. It, you know, maybe it's a little stressful because they're, you know, they're three to eight years old. But I said, oh, honestly, I just wake stressful. up, work out, you know, do some pull-ups, you know, do some cardio, eat healthy, cook food, count my money. <laughs> you know, and no matter I was gonna say that's like the military job or whatever, you can save yeah. money. So right now I'm only making twelve hundred and forty eight dollars a month. I have to pay for rent oh, and food. But, but I'm able saving. to save about four to five hundred dollars a month. There we go. Damn, Cambodia's actually a little more expensive than I thought. Yeah. Cause uh I mean that's that's a pretty I mean, if you got a four grand monthly nut and you got five hundred dollars left over, like that means thirty five hundred of that's getting spent. Yeah, well, um, it probably comes into being his own boss too. Yeah, because I thought maybe he was at a school or something, and I was like, "Is there a principal?" But I no. probably privately. Yeah, if he's teaching, tutoring people yeah, or if he's, he's tu- yeah. teaching classes, I mean, like he could have like a building. Like, geez. Yes, so he probably it's has to pay for pay for all of that too. I kind of wanted to call in about foreign business ownership. That that sounds kind of interesting. Yes. Maybe this isn't the show for it, but we do have a big Southeast Asian audience. <laughs> maybe yes. they want to know what it's like in the Cambodian market. <laughs> So if Cambodia, if you're watching, which they might start watching now because Max watching. So maybe, it's going to get maybe, the algorithm. Yes. We can get them to, to reach out to us. Any Cambodians out there, reach out. Maybe we'll talk about uh, Cambodian business. Maybe that's why we're taking off in Asia. Maybe it's because we have someone watching whole episodes. <laughs> that is possible. In Southeast Asia. This is possible. Yes, definitely. We're, we're big in uh, Russia too. Really? That's a part of the immigrant. Yes, they're third. They're like, we just want Americans who aren't talking about yes. the war. Yes, and it's, it's the so name. Nice. It's the name. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. That they align with. They're like, wouldn't it be nice if they had death camps there? Yes. <laughs> the curiosity gets the better of them with the name, and then they're like, oh, this is actually a feel-good show. Yeah. Okay. This is laughing, at our cult, laughing at our culture a little bit. Oh, it is like watching John Krasinski. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a good, this show is a good entry point for foreigners to get into American culture. I think so. Honestly. Really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm I'm absolutely sure that we're we feed into some foreign shit posters like, oh, I'm gonna make Americans look bad this week. Oh good. Like, yes. Yeah, as if the short YouTube shorts audience in America already doesn't get it <laughs> and loses the context with the comedy. Do we do we want one more uh, yes. dispatch? We've got we've got one more here. And so next, uh, I live in Cambodia, Phnom Penh, Cambodia. I'm going to be going to Thailand, oh, Thailand for my birthday and treating myself. Oh, nice. You know, that's when I can have some fun. 
and uh, no hedonism or anything. Uh, Good don't to know. End up with an STD or anything, but that shit's not going to fulfill you anyway. It kind of steals away your sexual energy. Um, you want that whole family believes that that is so yes, weird. Yes. The whole fam that whole family has like a mysticism about their their seed. The SR, yes, yeah, it's yes, so crazy. Yes. A lot of SR boys out there. I understand. <laughs> like, like fucking uh, Izzy's a, yeah. a semen holder. Yes. Uh, a retainer. Um, non hedonistic lifestyle. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Rain's Rain's pretty ascetic. Yes. They, they're all about uh, preserving their life essence. You know, yeah. they don't want it sucked away from them in any any facet. I think they watch too much fucking Star Wars. Yes. <laughs> Anime. <laughs> Anime. <laughs> a lot of mysticism. Yeah, believe Yu Gi Oh. Yes. Yu Gi Oh. And yeah, a lot Dragon of Dragon Ball Z. Oh yeah. Naruto. That's where it comes from. Yes. 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 Someone that's virtuous. They might have powers if they hold on to the seed. Yeah. You know. He's waiting to go <laughs> Super Saiyan. Yes. Izzy's always about to go Super Saiyan, dude. He's always on the verge of Super Saiyaning. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Anyway, you don't want a distraction. And that's what I noticed about, even though I am, a, you know, I've turned myself into a good looking guy per se. And, you know, I'm healthy and can, you know, have, you know, good libido and stuff. That's not going to serve me. You know, just like food isn't going to serve you. And all these things aren't going to serve you. It's going to serve you more as energy, buying things that are tools, yes, you know, not tools. buying a bunch of crap and collectibles and Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh cards and whatever. And <laughs> the closer to... <laughs> it's okay to watch it. It's not okay to buy the merchandise. Okay. Yeah. No, no pop figurines. Max, not a pop figurine kind of guy. I don't think... Yeah, he's definitely not a Funko Pop home. Yes. Well, they're probably producing it there, so... <laughs> <laughs> But that was Mac on the mic. Yes, everybody. Mac on the mic. Show the uh, show the loop again. Here the graphic. Go. Mac on the mic from Cambodia. Thank you, my Mac, for all your wonderful messages. Hopefully, you picked something up there. Okay, you guys, you got to hold on to your seed. You got to learn how to spend your money the right way. You got to you got to serve yourself. Serve yourself in ways that you benefit from. And protect your seed. Damn it. Yes, protect your seed and <laughs> don't buy toys. Okay. <laughs> Two wonderful messages to take home, everybody. I, I love that that uh, this whole segment. I feel like this is going to be an ongoing thing. We'll probably hear back from Mac next week, so tune in for that, okay? If you're, if you're a fan of uh, Mac on the mic. I mean, you know, we... Um, um, oh, yeah, so, so go ahead, go ahead. Uh, we have some voicemails we can do, but I, I feel oh. like we should probably show a couple more videos. Death Clock, yes. 37 yes, minutes. Yes, we're going to do, do some videos, and then, then we'll hit everyone's favorite uh, Death Camp voicemails. Um, so back to, you know, the, the catching predators at Walmart. There's some people who do some uh, more wholesome things at Walmart instead of catch predators. They like to interview people. Are you into the interviewing the people of Walmart kind of thing? Um, you know, I I guess I haven't seen much of it. I, there's a guy locally ah. who likes to interview homeless people. Yes, yes, and, so this is the kind of thing that is similar similar to this. Um, have you ever heard of Infobren? Infobren. No. Yes, oh, I, you know, we're actually having a technical error okay. saying this page isn't available. The video might have been We'll have a. We'll take a second. Here. Yoinked. No, it's just gone, brother. We got to move on to the next topic. Okay. Well, let's do. Uh, let's do. Uh, let's do. Uh, did you type in Walmart for that? Yep. Okay. Now, now type in infra infra bren, i n f r a, b r e n, infra bren. Infra bren. Fuzzy little arms. Yes. Yes. So this guy, he's at the he's at the Walmart. He's one of the Walmart guys. Okay. <sighs> Yes, and this will, I know, I know this will, this will be here. This, are you sure? Uh-oh. I think, inf, is InfoBrin like. Take a, let's did, take a, let's take a second here. Let's, uh, so you know, uh, Facebook has been fucking with us a little bit, okay? And we, we've had trouble with Instagram, so we had to, we had to stop for a second and uh, recheck some of the videos here. So I've got, I've got it set up finally. This is InfoBrin. He's one of the Walmart guys. He likes to go there. He wears, he wears the, the spectacles, the hidden camera spectacles. And he likes to he likes to interview these people, but he's also doing this for a brand called Beersy. You ever heard of Beersy? No, I don't think anyone has. They, yeah. So if you're drinking beers, they got one of those silicone covers, and it makes it look like it's some other drink. So okay. he'll walk in here, and it's got goofy things on it. And I think this one's called Green Tari Stool that he's drinking. So he'll go be really weird to these people and uh, try to get them to drink his beer in in public. So we'll see what he does with this uh, kid here. See, aren't I looking goofy? <laughs> You're kidding me. Who is you? It's Bren. Who the fuck is Bren? Bren. Who do you think I am? My sweet little butterball. What? <laughs> SLB, as Kenneth would say. Remember this? Who the fuck is that? You. No. Just confusing the these people. Me, you, Kenneth, and the boys. We who used to fill a bathtub full of lutefisk and marinate. 
all night <laughs> long. Ludifist. Remember this? What? You're breaking my heart. Who the fuck is that? You. Oh, you was also creep shit. <laughs> Dolphin dive high five. <laughs> Who the fuck? You don't remember this? Just step what away. Are you about? <laughs> you me. That's not me, dude. You got the wrong dude. He's almost cracking up. Dude. Really? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck is that? Green Tory <laughs> stool? Uh, huh? What is that? <laughs> he likes to do the slurping. Oh, Danny boy. Danny boy. What the fuck is you talking Danny about? Danny boy. He's got, he's got a lot of patience to just stand there. I feel like you're pranking me right now. Nobody's pranking you. You was on some weird we shit. Did the wherewithal to be there? I don't know you. you not was a not run away from this guy. Creep. I, what was that? He's got a he's got a lot of wherewithal. This the gentleman that he's talking to 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 just stand there and take all of this and yeah, it seems he's standing get really fucking close. <laughs> like that is like less. That's like less than eighteen inches away. Yes, yeah, so I would have. I would have taken off. You know, and a lot of times, sometimes he's got like uh, he'll have like red paint on his fingers and be like, I was dunking it in all this stuff. Smell my smell my fingers. And like, I, I I don't want to smell your fingers, dude. I okay. I kind of hate him. Yes. I don't. I think it's. <laughs> I hate his tone of voice. It's just. It's one of those things. Where I'm like, he's kind of doing the Longmont Potion Castle thing. Yes. Which, and I, I love Longmont Potion Castle. In person. Yeah, but that's <laughs> the thing. In, in person. In person, that makes it annoying as fuck. Yeah. Because it's just like, you're just actually cancer. Oh, and you've got to see this guy, too. He's got a like, big scraggly beard, and he wears like a ball cap, and he's got long hair, and he's wearing like a green old faded military jacket, military fatigues. I don't know. I guess I guess uh, if it, I guess it's just because it's poop jokes, mm. and it's... And he's just like annoying no, people. That. There's no art to it. Yeah, like be clever. Well, I like the one. He's got he's got a, a one that has uh, Clorox. Yeah, it looks like it's a can of Clorox. And people are like, "That's got to be legal." <laughs> <laughs> it's, drinking, it's like they they don't care. He's you know it's it's beer. He's already drinking in public. It's fun. Yeah, I I'm don't. Surprised think... he hasn't been stopped for public intox. Yeah, <laughs> open container in the Walmart. I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to be drinking IPAs in Walmart. I wonder if it's actually beer. Yes. Yeah, it is. Because he, he, he has gotten some people to drink it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, IPA. Oh, that tastes great. <laughs> I wouldn't, you know, I, one, I wouldn't be taking edibles from strangers in Walmart. And it's, I definitely yeah. wouldn't be taking open drinks it's from a, people in Walmart, okay? It's a weird, uh, it's a weird thing to uh, drink a stranger's beer. But also, oh, yes. the, the vinyl wraps thing for drinks is like yeah. very 70s and 80s. Really? Yeah, that's like it's I something that was that, a new thing. No, it's something that like my dad and his brothers would talk about. Like, cause that's wow. how you get into sporting events. You'd have just a vinyl wrap that looked like it said Coke on it. Yes. And you'd just fuck put it around yes. your beer. Okay. Okay. So, so this yeah, Beersy is thing. not breaking new ground. They're they're retreading a a trend that died for good reasons. Yes. Just putting like weird ironic things on it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I kind I kind of get this. Let's um. I, they're I, taking I, it a step further. Like sometimes, yeah. Like I so, there's one for Sunkist that I used yeah. to see called Skunk Ass. <laughs> so that's not it's not new ground for sure. Yeah, he's got one that's called uh, dolphin milk. Dolphin milk. That's dolphin milk. Fun. Dolphin milk's product. Yes, that that one that one's very fun. I've got I've got one. Let's try let's try one more here with him. Okay, I'm going to type in wet willy. Okay. Wet willy. I'm trying to remember this one, but this 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 should be a good one. Yeah. This, oh, this is the, does this uh, have exposed? No, this is the the raving one. I think we clicked a different link here. Um. Oh, okay. Jumping all over. So we've been having a lot of technical difficulties. I think it's because you went after Sean Strickland. Yeah, he's clearly I sending think, yes. someone after us. Yes, I'm waiting for a CIA kitty to show up. Be listening to us probably around the house somewhere. I I, be I believe that somewhere around this compound. So we're gonna move in a different direction away from Walmart. Okay. Uh, Asmund Gold. Are you familiar with this man? You know, I've just seen his video face game around. streamer. He's been around, you know, as long as YouTube has. I'm pretty yeah. sure. World of Warcraft guy, big World of Warcraft guy. You know, it's like it's like he, with Mac. You know, he he played <laughs> World of Warcraft so much it made him become the man that he always wanted to be. <laughs> <laughs> so this kind of ties in with uh, some stuff we've been covering recently. We've covered Bill Maher a couple of times, okay? And in this clip, we're going to see Asmund react to Bill Maher, okay? And people use get upset about some of the Bill Maher content, Bill Thorne. So we're going to see how Asmund does with uh, the Bill Maher content. Other people play video games is a waste uh -oh. of fucking time. Okay. Uh, 
Bill, listen. B- Bill's Bill's right like three times a year. And let's be honest. This is one of those times. Oh, it is a waste of fucking time. Mm. So is watching your show. Uh, People do it for entertainment. It's, not, it's a different waste of time. time. Bill, very, you know very, uh, You've been wasting cheap shot. time for 30 fucking years. Okay, okay. What are you sitting here getting pissed off? <laughs> okay, you need to calm down. Okay, Asmund Gold, all right? Just because he, he, you don't know how to make fun of yourself, all right? Or take a joke about uh, what you do for a living, okay? You're just like the shorts audience. You're taking it out of context. He's big mad. <laughs> oh, he's very mad. This is a this is a defense mechanism thing, okay? Uh, and you're getting mad at him for the entertainment thing. You know what? At least he doesn't have uh, eight or nine months worth of Burger King and Wendy's cup sitting around his room. <laughs> so I think Belmar is allowed uh, to say some of this stuff, okay? And, and also, he's on HBO. He's not on Twitch. Yeah. Okay, Asmund Gold. And I All don't right. think Bill, Bill Maher doesn't really waste his time. He li- he, he, no. he does not treat life as a spectator sport, which is what yeah. his I think Bill's argument is is that people that watch Twitch streamers all day, yep. you are living life as a spectator sport. Go do something with your life. Go yes. go get sores from a hot lady. Go fucking uh, yeah. snort something like one time. Yes, maybe, maybe like, those kind of people should be living a hedonistic lifestyle. Yeah, give okay. it a shot. Yes, yes. Try something. Try something different. Even when Bill Maher is relaxing, okay, and smoking weed, he's doing he's doing club random. Yeah, yeah. But he's okay. he's never like <laughs> I am. De- I am depressed. You know why? Because yeah. because he has nine hookers on speed dial. He's got his <laughs> shit together. <laughs> yes, I don't think uh, even hey, even Boogie has dipped his hand in this. Okay. But Boogie's got a little bit more motivation than even you do, Asmund Gold. Okay? Oh, d- has Boogie talked shit about Bill Maher? Oh, no, no. I meant with the, the hookers. Oh, <laughs> Boogie, Boogie likes whores? Oh, yes. He spent, I didn't uh, know that. He spent $200,000 on instead of uh, his mortgage, which he went over. And uh, Oh, yes. Oh, this was... Oh, and that was like like e- E-Girls, too, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. Yes, it, yes, he's, yes, he's, yes. He, went, he lost his house over E-Girls. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing. Cautionary tale. Wait, and I think what's crazy <laughs> is now he's just learning that he could have been having sex with fans and women on the I'm internet sure. generally like i don't know um, could have had a genuine relationship with a woman <laughs> yeah like a serious like heart f- felt connection yeah like heartfelt heartful yes heart, heart, heartfelt heartfelt <laughs> i don't know why heartful came to my mind it's not a fucking word it's close enough but yeah that's and it does asmund gold do the thing the the moist critical thing where you make one point and then repeat yourself for five minutes. Yes. Okay. And he all, I hate but that. he's a mix of Asmund Gold or he's a mix of moist critical and Ethan Klein because he's got the he's got the, the facial, <laughs> the eyebrow acting. Oh yes. It's yeah, I yeah, you yeah. know Ethan Klein it's does some of the up. best eyebrow comedy ever. <laughs> oh yeah, he should win an award for that. <laughs> for <just> eyebrow comedy. <laughs> eyebrow dancing. <laughs> God, I I hate how attractive. Hila Klein is. I, I really. Oh, you're are like the, she looks like a ghoul. You're into the Hila? Yeah, dude. Oh, I, I, dude. Um, just Jewish women in general. I don't mm-hmm. know what it is, yeah. but uh, I e any any Lederman maybe. Oh, um, you know, I've that's weird for me because I've seen her live multiple times. Oh, really? Yeah, she's cool. Oh wow, I didn't know. Yeah, no, I saw her in college, and then cool. I I got some comp tickets from her like before oh, her career sick. took off. Oh, dude, dude, that was whoa. really yeah, it was pretty cool. She's wow. a she's super nice, super supportive of young comics. I love when you're all about an artist before they blow up, and you're able to like experience it that way. Yeah, you know? yeah. We we went on some crazy comedy binge. Like we saw Segura, and then somebody else, and then we drove down a few hours away to see Annie Letterman just because we were like, let's just binge comedy for a few days. Yeah, that's fucking sick. It was a sick road trip. I would totally do something like that again. Like, that oh, was, yes. That was super yes. cool. We'll have, to, we'll have to do that. We'll take a... K- let's take KPN on the road. I would I would okay. love to. I would... The second we have enough people to justify that, because I think we have maybe, I don't like 200 people that would ever actually like come out to yes. do something. Yes, we'll get there. So, and then we'll all <laughs> hop in an RV. Yeah. You know, and then uh, Izzy and the Duhheads can do his little RV thing. They want to do the RV thing. Oh, it's been it's we've been talking about it. You know, we've talked about it here and there. So we can we talk about how it's never gone well for anybody. We can we can bring it to fruition. You know, I feel like he'd be able to pull it off. You know, I think Izzy could do it. You know what's weird about that? Because like it's an ice Poseidon bit, right? The the RV across America. Mm -hmm. You know who originally said they were going to do that but never did? Who? T.J. Kirk, the amazing atheist. Really? It was one of the first things he did. It was like kind of his first big scandal. Is he he collected. I think it was. I think it was just like maybe it was like three or five grand or something like that. And I might be yeah. wrong about that. TJ is normally a, kind of a stand-up guy. Yeah. So, uh, and he was gonna like use it to buy an RV and go 
uh, from one end of America to another talking with Chris to Christians about atheism. Yeah. And it just never happened. You know, it, I, th- I think God, absolutely I think God stopped him. God stopped him. <laughs> God made him commit yes, fraud. <laughs> yes. God interjects sometimes. <laughs> Slide of hand by God, making him do the fraud. There was, a, there was a point in time where TJ Kirk could have been like a thought leader. Mm. And he was. There's totally like yes. an entire generation of people that are impacted by his thoughts. Yeah, definitely. And now he's like Diogenes. He's, yes. he's like he, he in a barrel and <laughs> yeah he kind of i think it he took too long to uh grow into like his marilyn manson persona like yeah. he's always idolized people that were like very extroverted and he's just not like that yeah it just didn't work it didn't work the way he wanted it to yeah it took too long you gotta you gotta grow your fan base a little quicker than that as well too yeah dude yeah he he's slow rolled he, he took the 10 year <sighs> track to a million followers okay instead of the wendigoon six yes. month uh power course well at least he didn't you know do the do the cheap stuff and low hanging fruit you know he's probably trying to do it organically which well, you gotta commend him for a little bit no yeah here's a guy who comes on mike and he's just like here are my thoughts about religion and like <laughs> that that actually was the most interesting thing on youtube for like years yeah it was people's thoughts yeah well and unlike wendigoon <laughs> he wouldn't just be sitting there refreshing waiting for the million views Wait, yeah. you know he's not so point. egotistical about it you know what i mean <laughs> he's not doing an ad for world of tanks no no he, he in is his book dissertation no 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 he would he, oh, was, he would. Actually, <laughs> it was totally an ad read guy <laughs> okay up and down yeah um ever ever since the ad apocalypse happened and sponsored content became the norm <laughs> Oh yeah, among everybody. Right? Yeah, uh, Raid Shadow Legends. I shouldn't even be saying these buzzwords on you know, the show. <laughs> that leads to trouble. You know, they just send you an email at a hundred and a hundred fifty thousand subscribers. Wow. Yeah, they just it's there's a lot of companies where their whole strat is just like automated, just like looking for who hits a hundred thousand subs and then yeah. being like, okay, send an email. Oh well, we're out. We're gonna be out here. Okay. We're gonna be out here. We're out yes. here, guys. American Death Camp is gonna be sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> give, give Ho- us hopefully Sean Strickland someday. If you guys can mend that fence, I think if we just <laughs> talked louder and we pretended to be more excited than we are, yeah, we would definitely get there. I I get excited about some of this stuff. I definitely got excited about you and Sean Strickland. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm I'm hearing I'm, wedding bells. I'm ready for that. What, <laughs> wedding bells. <laughs> uh, okay, you know, on to the on with the same video game train that we're on here. Uh, Moist Critical. We talked about him a little yeah, bit. Yeah, man. He did a Wired interview interview about a month ago. <laughs> Okay, and I wanted to watch some of this, okay? By the way, what is our death clock at? Uh, we got 52 minutes. Awesome, awesome. This should this should be enough time for the, uh, some of this stuff. I think it's like a 10-minute video, but we're not going to watch all, all 10. You guys know uh, Moist Critical? I mean, he's just so ubiquitous. I'm Moist Critical, and this is the Wired Auto Hi, uh, guys. Hi, uh, guys. There's a, there's a whole <laughs> fucking generation of dudes that talk like this. Yes. And they all have the same skinny blue haired girlfriend. Mm. And it's, um, there was a guy. I haven't seen his girlfriend. I used to know who f- fucking, uh, would talk like that. And it, and it's, it's like talking like, it's when women talk like, uh, fucking who's, uh, Cardi B and they're oh. not Puerto Rican or whatever. Uh-oh. You're like, oh, you're a fan. Yeah. So. Wolf um, Vicky or something. Yeah. I would call him damp critical. To his girlfriend, <laughs> I'm be like, dude, how's, like how's, how's damp critical? Yes, <laughs> yes, that's what I'm gonna go as next Halloween is damp critical. Oh, that's, okay, that's the character I'm gonna play on the show. Is damp critical? I have a. Well, have a, you play damp critical? Um, historical European martial arts tore that friendship apart. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were, they were, they were pop. They were mad. Papa knew how to fence. Mm. <laughs> I could see that. You know the skills with the fencing. No, oh, that's what you and Sean Strickland need to do. You need to do fencing. Oh, he would. <laughs> Sean Strickland would never fight me in sword play because he's a bitch pussy with a narrow skill set. You better, you better get your uh, get your outfit on, get your your netted mask. Yeah, okay, Sean, you better you better start getting that now. Yeah, get yourself yeah. a lightsaber and some proper <laughs> some proper attire, and meet me in the fencing gardens. Or you guys can do that uh, that French kickboxing. Yeah, savat. Yeah, oh, savat. You guys can oh, do some savat. You think that fucking side of beef can get his leg over his fucking temple? Mm-hmm. I don't think so, especially not with boots on. He might think it's too childish to yeah. do savat. Yeah, I've you know? I've I've seen your fucking teep kicks. <laughs> you couldn't do shit. You can't you can't kick a man above his fucking shoulders, dude. You're, yeah, you want you want to talk about walking? Okay, he's the king of walking. Yeah, that's, dude, why we, that's why we call him King Tanner. He's gonna walk you up and down. That's why. Thing. That's why uh, Michael Strickland's fucking groundwork is so fucking great. It's because he's got a squat wide 
center of gravity, like a little tater tot, like a tater tot with two shrinking testicles. He's got to squat wide because you put a, you're beaming him. <laughs> he's bow legged now. Yes, he's bow legged. <laughs> he's got a hernia. <laughs> now let's continue. Speaking of another guy who sounds like he's got a hernia, let's watch the the moist critical inter- interview with Wired here. Complete interview. <laughs> Zero, moist critical, Charlie, big moist, huge Charles. Man, doesn't that voice just get you going? Doesn't it make you moist? This is so boring. What is moist critical? <laughs> a five foot six hulking testosterone titan oh, who see? makes a bunch of oh. wacky, silly garbage on the internet. What does it's moist critical see, not just, wacky or see, silly? Now, what, at first, I got to say, since we've been doing the video game stuff, we're probably going to get some people upset. Some of our own fans are a little upset here because you know some of them like these guys. Oh yeah, okay. a lot of people like critical, dude. A well, lot and, of people we Asman, know like critical. They like Asmin too a little bit. I've watched a little bit of his content and stuff, but I know that they're going to get a little upset about that. But I'm sorry, some of these guys are so full of themselves, dude. Yeah, on dude. these scales, and I'm just like, oh. Dude, dude. Moist Mo- critical is a human Prozac. Yes, moist, moist cringical. <laughs> is how it makes me feel. <laughs> dude, what does moist critical do for That's a living? That's the second most searched thing. They're like, what does he even do? Like, does it, is it just this? Because it can't be just this. Yes, it doesn't. He, isn't he a comedian or something? Do no. Does he? Does he like? Can, like, does he do commentaries? Like, no. He just kind of says yeah. bad thing bad. Yep. Cool. Do for a living. I just post. Really ridiculous things on the internet. He doesn't even really got know. Got lucky enough that it <laughs> enables me to survive. He has no what idea what he does. Critical yeah, he's... do before YouTube. Nothing. I was I was ten before YouTube. I didn't have a career or a job. Yeah. I was still just oh, good to snorting know. glue and drinking milk. I was just a baby boy. Wow. So At least he wasn't snorting money, uh, urine. Probably is <laughs> in last episode. Snorting the urine with the child labor laws in America. What is moist critical email? Just critical contact at Gmail. You're going to have a hard time reaching me there. I did meet one of my best friends through video games email. All day. His name's Kaya. He reached out a long time ago with a super sad message that really tickled my heartstrings. I replied back. We became good friends through it. But these days, most people just sign me up for cult newsletters and a lot of other like really awful WebMD, like hypochondriac bait. But you're welcome to send me something. I probably won't see it, though. I'll just give it one of these... Yo, this is uh, this is the guy that gets uh, millions of views, and he's a uh, kid's hero. Like, yeah, I want to be like voice critical. I don't really know. I don't really know what I do. Oh, uh, it's like, dude, I, I, I get the appeal, but like, yeah. I don't at the same time because like just having people observe you, like there doesn't seem to be any real value in that. Yeah, it's like I don't know. I liked TJ's stuff when I was a teenager because I was like, this guy is trying to <laughs> fix stuff. With his brain. I yes. like that. Even yeah. though, I mean, it was, you know, pissing, you know, kicking him water uphill, but yeah. at least it, uh, it was stimulating. Like, Critical's shit is literally like when they eventually play YouTube videos in doctors' waiting rooms, mm. it's going to be moist critical videos yep. or jacksepticeye if you're yeah, a he, pediatrician. <laughs> he reminds me in the same vein of like uh, just reiterating copy pasta kind of stuff. Yeah, Reddit shit. Yeah, like he's that, like, he's like know? Nexpo with no editing. Yes, <laughs> yes. He he wants you to see his face while he's got the weird voice. Hey guys, I he's he's the Chris Angel of boring you to tears. Yes, um. <laughs> <laughs> the John Wick of uh, boredom. Oh, and okay, what else are people asking about him though? Yeah, let's let's De- see. Death clock at fifty eight. Let's see here. Let's get let's get another question in here. Why is moist critical? Penguin Z oh, Zero. Tremendously the lore important. Is super simple. I was actually a child. I made the account in 2007. Wait, I was wait, 11. Pause this for I, a second. He's been, you know what? No wonder he's so weird, dude. He's just like Mr. Beast. They've been doing this since they were children. Yeah. Like, like every day, all day, just YouTube, video games. I mean, constantly. No, no actual job. No actual employment. No. Going, going to, going to higher education. Uh, it does something to people. I feel like uh, it definitely you know? does. I, I, I feel. Uh, like some of these people are a little intellectually narrow. Mm. Like I don't, I don't think uh, Charlie is lining up to go see a fucking opera, or I don't yeah, think no. he's fucking kept up at night by no, the implications so. of cybernetics or anything. Like I think he, <laughs> he likes his Rick and Morty. Yes. And he, like I, I bet the the biggest thought this week was, you know what, the new voice actors for the new season of Rick and Morty did okay, <laughs> and that's all that matters. Have you have you watched that? 
Yeah, I watched uh, that. You, two episodes. Did you follow all the controversy and everything? I fall asleep uh, during the second episode. Oh, Seth came wow. over, he had bought him, and we watched. Uh, I think it, I think it's just the two out right now, but uh, it was good. Okay, it was funny. The voice actors are good. It was kind of nice to see that they threw Justin Roiland a bone by making him an executive producer. Oh, good. Yeah, okay. so he's not okay. completely like he he, and they took away his created by credit. Whoa! Yeah, so it just really? says Rick and Morty with nothing under it, and it looks it looks a little bare. What do you think the behind is the behind the thing is with that? He's probably like, I'm making millions of dollars, millions on millions of dollars. If I just remove myself and my name from the situation, I can continue to make millions of dollars. Still have a piece. Yeah, so he's he's just fighting to keep his piece. Dude. Oh, they might not have been able to continue doing the show if he was still the created by. If if it was if right? he was still voice acting that yeah oh, well, he, sure. he definitely i mean the show would just fall, fall apart so like wow. i'm um, just glad they don't have a guy like uh moist cringical yeah, on moist. uh rick and morty <laughs> yeah, dude. yes I'm, sh- I'm sure uh he'll be weighing in though i believe that i believe that maybe he'll get upset about what we're saying you know I, instead of you i'd rather see him uh fight sean strickland i would maybe you should yeah. fight moist critical I don't know. I mean, he's five six. I've, I'm, I'm actually you outclass him in the, in the I, weight department. I probably have thirty pounds and uh, fucking four or five inches on him. So like that no, would be give, give yourself some credit. It's at least seven or eight inches. <laughs> seven eight inches. In a couple different ways, you have seven or eight inches on him. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, no, but he's got. And he's, <laughs> Most of us do. He has said this. He has the, the largest dildo collection in the world. It's like over ten thousand dildos. Or he something. does. Yes, this is something he, he has Are you multiple videos me? about it. He. Bell Delphine had the largest dildo collection, and then he sought to topple that record because there's nothing that happens. What on a the good, internet. what a good cover up, by the way. Yeah, what I'm, a good I'm cover just up. ironically trying to beat Bell Del, Del, Delphine in a dildo yeah, owning I'm sure, contest. I'm sure, I'm sure. He That's why I have a warehouse of dildos. Yes, he's got some butt plugs bigger than him. <laughs> I believe that. All right, let's move away. Let's move away from Moist Critical. I've uh, yeah. shit on him enough a little bit. Uh, we've got we've got one more video that is uh, in line with the video games. You know, some people can play video games and do things. Okay, uh, mm-hmm. I want you to type in uh, Joe DeRosa. You oh, know, you know stand-up comedian the, Joe DeRosa. Yeah, yes. So he's going to talk a little bit about uh, the video games that he owns. Okay, that's interesting. I wonder because Joe Joe DeRosa doesn't come up a lot anymore, but he comes. Oh no, he does not. There was a there was a period of time. Um, wow, is this what he's looking like now? Yes, Joe, so Joe DeRosa, everybody. Point, but 40? He's got, yeah, because uh, I collect 40 3 game games. systems. There's different ones or like, because there's not 40. You got a 3 right? Atari. <laughs> oh, I'm like, I'm saying from Atari. <laughs> but even still, there's 40? Oh, yeah, dude. Let's do it. Okay. Atari 2600, Atari 5200, Atari 7800, Atari VCS. I like that they're keeping count for us. In Television 2, ColecoVision, and then I have a Coleco alternate called the oh, Gemini. Nice. Nintendo, Super Nintendo, we go. Nintendo 64, <laughs> GameCube, Wii U, Nintendo Switch. I'm super into this because I was watching Cinemassacre's Monster Madness earlier today. Yeah. So I've got I've got video game consoles on the brain. Oh, Nintendo Switch Mini. Game Boy. Very nostalgic. Game Boy Advance, we like the nostalgic Nintendo videos here. Nintendo 3DS, Super Famicom, Sega Master System, like Sega, Genesis, Sega Genesis, Sega Genesis You don't need the ding two, every fucking Sega time. Sega CDX, <laughs> Sega Saturn, dings. Sega Dreamcast, Sega Game Gear. Game Gear, yeah. Atari Lynx, I forgot about. Yeah. PlayStation 1, got PlayStation the Jaguar? 2, PlayStation 3, we go. PlayStation 4, have the Jaguar. PlayStation 5, Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox oh, Series almost X. There. I'm also not counting like, okay, like Game Boy Advance SP. Yes. I've got a Game Boy count Color. The, count the handhelds, oh, oh, dude. Um, the new thing. 3DO, uh, bro. He doesn't out. have a 3DO. Cartridge Lame ass. I'll have to look it up, but just trust me. There's another one. I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I have more trust stuff. Like I have a ton two. of plug and plays. Right. Like I have an old Pong system, so that's yeah. one. You know, so uh, got to forty. Moist Critical's got a lot of plug and plays <laughs> as well too. You know, this might be why uh, Joe DeRosa has to. You know, he had to open a sandwich shop. He spent all his money on the video games. Yeah, that's where he's diversifying. <laughs> yeah, it's, diversifying. Yes. Yes, that's, that's what Joe DeRosa does now. He runs a sandwich true. shop. He he was doing that. Yes, at that's, a comedy club. He might he might still be doing that. That's smart. It's always it's always funny when comedians open up comedy clubs because it's always like when John Lovitz opened or bought uh, what did he buy like to to catch a rising star? I think he bought that. Oh, really? Bought, well, he, well th- he's got this is his little business within somebody else's comedy club. Yeah, he's got a little sandwich uh, shop, shop inside on. of it. He yes. re- he rents a booth. 
So I, God damn it, dude. I think it's like a whole kitchen he's got. It. Fucking I, th- I think it is a legit uh, operation, probably like a IE Jimmy John's kind of setup. What is, does, do we need to have all this gig economy horse shit or do people just not know how to file personal loan requests at banks anymore? I think it's that. Like that's like, honest. just get a loan guys. You don't need to, you don't need to save up he might, he might 20 have, grand. He might not be able to get a loan. <laughs> that might be, he probably used the loan to get the, the shop. So what's, so what's your form of employment, Mr. DeRosa? It's like, well, I'm a stand up comedian. Yeah. It probably wouldn't go over. Yes. And I make uh Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches is what I want to do. I want to make $20 peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> hey, at least he's had a job, okay? Moist Cringical has not had a job, and he's got all those dildos. I want you to know, the IRS is going to be very questionable about uh, all of that. It's very, no, it's it's sad how similar their jobs are, except Joe DeRosa had to, like, go out and, like, probably work on the road for 20 years. I don't know if he's a road yeah. guy or, like, just an L.A. Yes. guy. But, no, he's done some road stuff, for sure. For um, sure, you know, and uh, uh, he's in New York. He's a New York guy. He's a New York guy? Um, that makes more sense. That's another thing with, uh, back to the Bill Maher and Asmund Gold, dude, is that Bill Maher worked hard on his uh, stand-up. Yeah, his stand-up's you know? actually pretty decent. I mean, it's not for everybody, but it's like, he did the well, road. He it, did the. He did the. He was a fucking road comic for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah, you no, know? yeah. He he grinded it out. That's how he he got his joint on ABC. Was yeah. just being like a good stand up. Asman was only grinding on Wow. <laughs> okay, it's a lot different. All right, it's a lot harder to do that to do that kind of thing. It's easy when you don't have an audience sitting in front of you to do this kind of thing. Okay, so I think some of those low shots are a little bullshit. <laughs> all right. No, I think uh, I think this is going to be it for Death Camp. Okay, I yes, mean, yeah, we're right in hour stuff. five. We're stirring things up. I'm going to make some amazing shorts with to get Sean Strickland upset. Probably get the Nalk Boys upset a little bit too. Maybe even Moist Critical. Maybe be nice. We'll, maybe, maybe we'll hear from him a little bit. Okay. Um, I want everybody to go to killpodcasters.com. Okay, I want you to watch all the shows and check it out. I also want you to give this video a like. Okay, and a subscribe, and I want you to share it. All right, with everybody. Okay. Why don't you give me some music, King Tanner? Oh, hell okay. yeah. We'll talk this out a little bit. Oh, yes, yeah, yes, yes. yes. Fucking, um, so one of my new favorite parts of the show <laughs> is the ending. <laughs> All right. Um, I love you. King Tanner loves you. Kill Podcasters loves you. Okay, everybody. I want you to have a good night and have a great holiday. David, take it away. Stone Fox is done for today. Thank you for stopping by. Tune in again next time on American Death Camp. Remember to subscribe and follow the show and other shows on the Kill Podcasters Network. He's probably got a couple of real dolls lying around. One of Belle Delphine. Um, there's probably someone that's got a licensing deal with real doll. Like Asa Akira. Sean Strickland. The Sean Strickland <laughs> real doll. The Sean Strickland real doll. <laughs> <laughs> we'll buy one of those for Moist Critical. It's It, it punches you. <laughs> You know, I need to see a fight between Asmund Gold and uh, Moist Critical. That would be fun. That's dude. what I want. Instead of you know some of those streamer events that they got, I think, I think those two need to fight. Just straight up nerd boxing. Yes, I need to see Bill Maher's reaction though back to Asmund <laughs> Gold and just completely destroy him. He needs to make a whole movie. Um, hey, fuck right, dude. <laughs> video, video gate gameiculus yes, or what whatever. What you're doing is nothing. Okay. You're shit compared to me. Yes, maybe he'll invite him on Club Random. Maybe he'll, maybe he'll, yeah, invite him over to his penthouse. They could put out a fucking cigar on a whore together. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Maher, I want you to de- destroy everybody. Okay. Uh, <laughs> destroy everybody. <laughs> destroy. That should be his new show instead of Club Random. Destroy. <laughs> Bill, Bill Maher, <laughs> destroy everybody. <laughs> Destroys the world. <laughs> uh. God, this is this is a good fucking show. I forgot how long Bluff God's song is on the intro, on the yeah, outro. He's on for a minute. He's a, he's a good artist. I like him. Yeah, but uh, yeah, check out all the new shows we signed, guys. Thanks for yes. listening. Please donate Bitcoin if you got it. Yes, um, donate. Make sure to go listen on Spotify. Oh yeah, check us out there. But uh, we are on our way out, folks. Have a great night. Bye bye. Bye.